Visual Studio Code is incredible, but it can be a bit overwhelming with so many extensions and settings to change. So in this video, I'm going to show you my exact setup that I use, which makes me productive while coding and show you some tips and tricks on how you can modify your Visual Studio Code to make you more productive. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started, I wanna cover probably the most important extension that you're going to install if you're doing any type of web development inside of VS Code, and that is the live server extension. This extension just allows you to boot up any HTML page that you want, and it's going to live refresh every change. So as you can see, this person has this HTML page. When they make a change on the left-hand side in their editor and they click save, it's automatically going to refresh on the right-hand side of their screen. So that way when you're doing CSS changes, JavaScript changes, HTML changes, whatever it is, it's going to automatically refresh your page for you, which is incredible. And it saves you so much time since you don't have to manually refresh every time. This is an extension I use in pretty much every video that I create. Now the next extension I wanna cover is called tab nine. And this is an extension that does AI autocomplete. So it kind of takes like the VS code autocomplete, but just cranks it up to 11 with awesome suggestions. And I'm always amazed at how good the suggestions from tab nine are. And tab nine was actually kind enough to sponsor this entire video. So if you would go down in the description, you can check them out. They have a free tier and a paid tier for you to check out. Now tab nine works with tons of different languages. And the great thing, like I said, is it has these crazy autocompletes. Like this one single line is completely autocompleted just by clicking tab. They support tons of languages. And as you can see, they just autocomplete everything based on the AI research. So unlike normal autocomplete that requires you to have certain things set up to do the autocomplete, this is actually going to take autocomplete to the next level where it'll actually guess what you want to type. And nine times out of 10, it actually guesses correctly and gives you really good autocomplete suggestions. So again, I highly recommend you check this out. Also, if you want to see tab nine in use in an actual project, I have an entire video that I use tab nine to build out. I'll link in the cards and description for you to check out. Now, this next extension is by far one of the most important extensions you can install, and it is called Prettier. And all Prettier is is just an automatic code formatter. It has very few different options you can change because it's an opinionated code formatter. But the great thing about that is you just slap it onto your project and it'll automatically format all your projects for you. And I also have this configured so that every time I save a file, it automatically formats that file for me so that I don't have to worry about formatting it myself, which is a pain to do. And this really helps if you're learning to code as well, because it's going to force you into good coding practices. Since, like I said, it's a very opinionated formatter, so it's going to force you to follow the guidelines that are generally considered good practice in JavaScript or whatever language you're using. Now the next extension that I highly recommend you install is one called Git Lens. And this just takes the Git features that are built into VS Code and cranks them up to 11 again. They have tons and tons of different features. As you can see, five star review, nine million downloads. This thing is incredibly popular. And it essentially allows you to have all the features of GitHub built into your browser and all the features of Git. And one of my favorite features, if I scroll down here a little ways, is the feature that allows you to see the current line blame. Essentially, it's a little hard to see here, but there's a comment off to the right side of the code that says that you were the first, last person to modify this. It was four years ago, and it gives you the actual commit message, which in our case says supercharged. And the reason I love this is because when you're working with other people on a team, you can see who changed the code. So if you have questions about it, you can ask them and you can see what the commit message for that change was. So you can say, oh, why did they make this change? You can see that right in your editor without having to go to GitHub, without having to scour through different Git things. It's just right there in your editor. This is one of my favorite features. And this is just 1% of the features. I mean, this list is absolutely massive on the features that this contains. It's essentially all that you need with Git built into this one extension. Now, the rest of the extensions that I have downloaded aren't quite as important as my opinion, but I want to briefly go through a few of them just so you can have an idea of what I use. So this one right here is called Code Spell Checker. Super straightforward. It just spell checks your document and anytime there's an error, it'll underline it for you. Super useful. I suck at spelling and this saves me so many times. Now, this extension right here, Custom CSS and JS Loader, you probably aren't going to need, but it allows you to actually write custom CSS to change how your VS code looks. And I use this to make my files over here show up larger. I currently have this disabled right now. It's not actually running, but I use it so that I can have the files on the side show up larger in a larger font. That way, when people are watching my videos online, it's a lot easier for them to read those file names. Now, the next one I have here is EGS language support. If you're working with EJS, super useful. Emoji is pretty straightforward. This one, ES7, React, Redux, GraphQL, React Native Snippets. If you're doing anything at all in React, you need to download this extension because it just makes creating React components so much simpler because you just have a single snippet that you can use. So you can type RFC and it will create you a React functional component instead of having to type out all that boilerplate. 
Now this one is really cool. Anytime that you have a CSS file linked inside your HTML, what's gonna happen is when you're actually typing out your HTML, it's going to auto correct your different class names. So as you can see here, we have all these style sheets being included. And down here, when we start typing in classes for our divs, it'll auto complete those for us. I really like this because it saves me from having to remember what the class names I'm typing out are. Now live share, this is great if you're gonna do any pair programming because in VS Code, you can actually live share with someone else. You can both modify the same files, see the same files and work on the exact same project side by side. It's like Google Docs, but for code. Now MDX is not super useful to worry about. Pizza, this is a video that's coming out very soon on how I built out this extension, so stay tuned for that. This REST client here, this is a really useful extension if you're doing any API work. If you've ever used something like Postman before, this is like Postman, but actually built into VS Code, and it allows you to make these different requests to your API that you're building. And you can actually save these different requests instead of a file, you can see all the results from it. It's super useful if you have to do any type of manual API testing. Already gone through tab nine. This is for if you're using Tailwind. This is just Tailwind IntelliSense. So it gives you autocomplete for all the different Tailwind classes out there. Really useful if you like Tailwind. To do highlight is a great extension for if you are writing notes in your code. For example, to do, fix me, and other things. It's just going to highlight those in your code so you can really easily see the location of where those different comments are. And I use comments a lot for things like this. So it's a great way for me to come back and say, okay, I need to do this. And it's highlighted so I really easily can see it. Now, the last important extension here is this styled components. It's essentially just syntax highlighting for styled components. So if you're using those inside of React, I highly recommend this. And then finally, I have this blog extension that I created myself. You can check out the video on how I did this, which I'm gonna link in the cards and description for you. But other than that, I don't use too many extensions. As you can see, I really only have like four or five main extensions and then a few smaller ones that just supplement the other extensions that I have, such as the spell checker or this custom CSS thing. Now, the reason I do this is twofold. One, because VS Code is already so full of features, I don't need very many extensions. And secondly, when people watch my videos, I don't want them to be confused because there's tons of different crazy stuff going on, on the screen. I want it to be about as basic as possible when it comes to the VS Code setup. And that's why you'll also notice that the theme that I use inside of VS Code, if I just open up a random file here, it's just the default VS Code theme. If I come and change my theme, you can see that I'm just using Dark Plus, which is just the default dark theme. Same thing with my fonts, actually. I use the default font built into VS Code, but I only do that because of tutorials. I don't want to confuse people with a different font. If I had my choice when it came to fonts, I would actually use a font called Fira Code. And if I just switch over to what that font looks like, if I just open up my settings real quick, and I just go to font, and I just change my font here to be Fira Code, you'll see that if I come over to here, it just changes my code slightly. It's not a huge, massive change, but the thing I really love about Fira Code is that they have font ligatures that you can use. So if I come in here and enable font ligatures, and I just change this to true, and now I save, and I just open up a random file, you'll see that if we scroll down here a little ways, you can see that this triple equal sign is replaced with this one really long equal sign that has three lines. Same with arrow functions, it turns into like one single symbol. And this just, in my opinion, makes it a little easier to read code because now you have these larger symbols that really represent different things. This is a love-hate thing. You either love it or you hate it. I really enjoy it, but I have it disabled for all of my tutorials just because it can be really confusing if you're first starting out and you see arrows that look like this or equal signs that look like this. You're not really sure where they come from because you're not using them yourself. So I have this disabled for tutorials, but when I'm writing my own code, I almost always use Fira Code as my font and font ligature set to true. Now, other than that, I actually have very few things set up inside of VS Code for settings. One that's really important is if you're using Prettier, make sure you change your default formatter to that Prettier VS Code. And you can say that you want to format on save, for example, on JavaScript and TypeScript. I've told my editor to format on save. That way, whenever I click save, it automatically runs Prettier for me. You'll also see I have a much larger font size set. That's, again, purely for recording purposes. Now, pretty much the only other main thing that I recommend changing yourself is if you scroll over the top here, you can see that I've actually changed my terminal to use git bash. If you're on a Windows computer, the default command terminal is not that great. So I'd recommend changing your integrated terminal to something like git bash, which is a much better and much more robust terminal. And if you have git installed, then you're of course going to have git bash as well. Really the important thing about VS Code is just getting started. Download the few core extensions that I mentioned at the beginning that I find really, really useful and maybe choose a font and a color theme that you really like. And from there, just start coding. 
Eventually you'll run into things where you're like, oh, I wish I had this and you'll find an extension for it. But don't worry about perfecting your setup right away. It really doesn't matter because the differences between the perfect setup and a setup that's mostly good is like a 1% difference, but it's gonna take you 10 to 20 times as long to get to that perfect setup because there's so many things you have to search through. So I recommend just getting a good enough setup and going from there. And as you go, just slowly incrementally improving it as you find extensions and things you want to change. Now, if you're interested in more extensions that you can install, check out my videos linked over here. They're gonna be covering the best VS Code extensions in my opinion, so you can really fine tune your VS Code setup even beyond what I showed you in this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.